What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys here, another tutorial. Gonna do a uh, sort of a Calabatus emerger type thing. Um, this is a size 16 curved hook. This is a partridge uh, feather off a wing. I'm just gonna use a few fibers, not too many. Maybe f whatever, three or four. To start a little tail. That's too many. I like to use the partridge wing. It's a little I don't know, it's a little softer than some other materials. Um, I'm going to put it right on top. <clears throat> and I don't care if these tails flail out. If they flail, that's great. If not, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. But I like them to be uh, fairly long. Here we go. About the length of the body. So about the length of the body here. Um, before I move forward, what I have here is I have some CDC and I'm just gonna um, tie it in out back loosely. I'm just gonna do one, two wraps, I'm gonna pull it. And I just want a little bit on top of the tail. Be careful not to let it roll on you. This will also add to uh, add to sort of the bulk of your body, make it a little bulkier. So there, I have just a, just a little, just a little bit, and even that might be too much. And then I'll go up and kind of trim it off where I think that my body is going to end, and that's going to be pretty close. Probably a little shorter than that. The body is going to be a goose bio, and it's not very long. All right, so I don't want to build the body up too much, so I'm not going to do anything crazy with the body here. I'm just going to keep it like that. So there's our tail with our little fluff. As I said, don't let it roll on you. Make sure it's right on top. So there's our little fluff, a couple tails, looking pretty good right now. I don't like to go too far into the bend. Don't go too far, but just just as it starts, really, just as it starts. Now I'm going to take my goose biot. Here it is. This is an olive goose biot, um, and I'm going to tie the tip in facing backwards. You really want to secure this in because the biots, as some of you may know, are very very slippery. Um, there we go. I like to do touching wraps as I'm moving forward. That way I can keep the body kind of uniform. And now you can do a little shaping if you want. Again, it's a calabatus, so not too much shaping needs to be done. That's fine to me right there. So a little thicker, not much. As I said, the uh, goose bots are really slick, so I'm going to use some hackle pliers for this and this really comes in handy when you have a rotary vise um, to do these wraps because it's almost impossible to do it <clears throat> with your hand and not let it slip out so there we go I, I, it doesn't need to be a lot it just needs you know Four segmentations is great. If you can get to four, that's great. If you can't, no biggie. And then just secure that down. So about halfway to the hook is the body. Nice little segmentation there, looks great. Uh, this thread that I'm using is sheer 14 0 14 0 um, So it's not very, not very strong, but it doesn't build up at all. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the leftover CDC that I had, and I'm going to tie it in, and I'm going to do the same thing. I just want a little poof, teeny, teeny, tiny. There's some stragglers there. Okay, so there you go. You see it's just a teeny, teeny, tiny poof, and I want it to be right on top. So if it's rolling on you, take care of that. As you can see, it's just a little poof there. Just a little tiny little poof. 
And we can secure that in, we can trim it down. Okay, so this little section that I've made, this little thread, thread ball here, that is going to be sort of a pre-abdomen section, really kind of an abdomen section, but before we do anything, what I'm gonna do is, it's a cripple, so I'm gonna take the start and sort of tie in the cripple out front. I've already stacked some deer hair, but this is deer hair that I'm using. It doesn't flail up, because I don't really want it to flail up all that much, since it's a cripple. And I've already pre-stacked some hair. You don't need a lot. The biggest mistake people make with cripples is they overdo the wing. So you see that? It's very, 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 very fair. And they overdo the, the wing. And so what I'm going to do is just catch it. Don't cinch down too hard because it will flail up. And I'm just going to gently catch it a few times. Make sure they're all on top. And then I'm going to pull the fibers back. To get the correct wing length on the front. Here, I've wrapped it just a little too tight. There we go. Come on not cooperating for me, and that's okay. All right, let's try this way, there we go. We'll just start with the correct length, so there we go. Now, the key is to not let them roll, because if they roll on you, you want the wing to be on top. You want it to be above the eye, you know? So you don't want them to roll at all. So what I do is lock them in once you're confident they're on top and then work all the way to the eye. Work all the way to the eye. Nice tight wraps, making sure everything's staying on top. Once I get to just about the eye, so I'm just a hair before it, I like to flatten it out with my fingernail. So I'll push down, push down on it and just get it nice and flat so we have that nice spread out wing. See how that's nice and spread out? So before I really pinch down on it, I'm gonna move back all the way to where my body finished, where those biots finished. So I move all the way back to right there. Boom. Now I'm gonna get some dubbing. And here I have some uh, red squirrel dubbing that I made. I want this to be a relatively relatively tight ball and again dubbing number one problem people put too much. You can see how much I'm putting there very very sparse amount and I'm gonna roll it pretty tight because I just want the ball to be short. I don't want it to be long. I don't want it to be a big ball. I just want it to be a little tiny ball right after it. And I don't, again, I don't need it to be big, I don't want it to be a lot. Just like that. So you see that little ball, it's perfect. What I'm gonna do next is grab all this deer hair that's right on top, and this is why it's kind of important that it's on top, so that when you pull it over, when you pull it over, just like that, make sure everything's nice and tight, creates a little cap creates a little cap on your ball all right I put some wax on my thread just because it's very very easy to uh, a lot of this material in this fly is really slippery um, so there I have a little ball and you guys can see it quite well there and a little cap before I do my next step I'm going to come in I'm going to trim these down, trim them down, they're deer hair so they, uh, they flatten quite well when you wrap them up because they're hollow. So 
So there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some UV if I have any left, which I think I do. Maybe not. And I'm just going to put a little drop right on top of that casing. Okay. Now you can kind of wiggle it around and let it get all kind of in that deer hair. You really don't want it to uh, get into your dubbing. Okay. You want it to stay right on top, and that's pretty good. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and add some hackle. This is Whiting's, uh, I think it's light ginger, I can't remember. But that's the color, it's a nice light color. I think it's a good contrast with the... Uh, with the darker deer hair that I'm using and the kind of darker dubbing and I just think that it's a, a good contrast. So I go right up to the cripple section. Again, this is slippery, so make sure that you've got it in nice and tight. This is, you wanna keep this middle section right here kind of even. I haven't done a super great job of that, but you wanna keep it even because when you wrap it, um, if it's not even all the way through, your fibers will lean left and right, and those wraps won't be great looking. And this one I did okay, so I'm just gonna start wrapping. I've taken half of the fibers off my hackle here because I wanted a less messy look, more of a clean finish, less dense, and they just make nicer wraps, so. If you're looking for cleaner wraps, then take your half of your hackle, strip half of it off, and you can get much nicer, cleaner wraps. So these fibers, see how they're kind of leaning forward a little bit, which is not ideal, but I mean not a big deal, but they're leaning forward just a little bit more than I would like, but whatever. Two wraps out front, one wrap out back, cinch it down. There's a little excess piece. Give that a trim. There we go. And you see that? You see how, I'll just point out one of my flaws here. You see how there's a little bit of a gap here? If my fibers weren't leaning forward as they are right now, if they were more leaning back or straight up and down, this gap would just be a little bit smaller. I could have started these wraps a little bit further back, but if you're trying to mitigate that sort of space right here, having an even thread base will help that also. I could have started a little bit further back, but it is what it is. So after that, just take your, uh, take your crippled wing here and I like to just kind of pull it back, get a few securing wraps underneath there. And then you can kind of position your wing as you see fit. And I think that's a great position. I think that looks really good. So, and you can see here it's a nice fan, nice fan out. There's a few fibers, take care of those. I like that a lot. You can do this after, you can do this whenever you want, the positioning of your cripple wing. Um, I usually do it after I whip finish, so I'm gonna come in and just give a few whip finishes out front. One, two, build up a small head, just to keep that crippled wing from, uh, just to keep that crippled wing from coming forward. Give it a snip, and now you can really position your wing. If you want, you can come in with UV, UV, um, you can come in with UV and kind of position it, drop a little drop at the very base of it, 
and it will stay exactly in that position. I don't like to do that, I just kind of like to let it flow. But that's a good fan, that's what we're looking for, a nice even fan, some good wraps, a couple loose fibers back there. Um, but there's our fly, this little crippled betis, calibatus. Um, Super, super effective. This is size 16. You can obviously make it uh, size 14. You can make it smaller um, for those smaller hatches. But here's our fly. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Floats really well, and, and fish love it. So, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you guys liked it. Check us out on Instagram. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Please subscribe to us, and we'll see you next time.